Now we look at the throttle bodies from the aftermarket billet throttle bodies like K tuned in Blocks Racing and even Skunk 2 to the OEM cast style 70mm and even on the reasons why it sticks or how it sticks and what to check and also of course the things that you can do to prevent such thing happening that could lead to horrific accidents of course right so we will show you what to check and fix and of course some tech tidbits that may help you along the way All right, now here in our possession, we have this Blox Billet 76 millimeter throttle, a pair of OEMs, and of course the 70 millimeter throttle body. Here you can see the Blox is a 76 millimeter billet. And here, the 70 millimeter we use is actually coming from the same factory that Omnipower used to get. We've been getting from them for over a decade or more than a decade now and hasn't done us anything wrong. So we always stick to what works for us. And we're gonna talk about the adjustments that you may overlook or not check that could help prevent such instances happening. And I know a lot of experts here already know this, but of course, like for example, if I say the throttle body sticks, the unsuspecting people would always think that it sticks in general. And that's not the case all the time. So here, you can see this it sticks when you shut it close you see and that actually becomes a pain you know in the ass to drive when that's happening see it's 76 millimeter blocks billet throttle body it's actually a pretty good unit right look it when you drive it and shut it close look at that it sticks and you know the car next to you would actually start thinking that there's something wrong with you because you keep revving the car and hey we might get in trouble for that okay wait no no let's show you the cast style 70 millimeter throttle that we carry and use and it's actually pre-adjusted but we always double check no matter and we make sure it's you know it's good it doesn't change along the you or the along the span of the use of the engine this way it doesn't cause any troubles in the future and we'll talk about that a little later on how to prevent it from sticking eventually. All right, see, it's, it's good and consistent. Okay, now let's go back to the bit, to the billet blocks throttle body. And we actually replaced the Allen screws with a bigger screw that you can actually see here, the throttle stop or idle stop and the full throttle stop. It, it goes both ways. Look, it sticks. So see, look at the stop, it's not adjusted. So when you go full throttle, you exceed it, right? Sorry, there. It needs to be adjusted so that the full throttle doesn't go overboard. And that gives you a hard time adjusting your TPS. And here the throttle stop, you can see we replaced the screw so it's visible for you guys. It's not even touching. So when you close it, when you close the throttle shut, the throttle plate actually seizes or locks up onto the throttle bore, which is what causes the throttle stickage or the throttle sticking. All right. So let's go and adjust that for a while. All right. Let's get a screwdriver and adjust it. Let's adjust the throttle stop here. We get it closer, not too much that it opens, just enough. And then here on the full throttle, and you make sure it's not open there. It goes a little bit more. And of course, after you've done this, you got to adjust it once again, once you play with the, with the TPS uh, calibration, the closing and the opening. Okay, see, it no longer sticks. And the thing with the original Allen bolt here, it also is, it has a double nut. So you have to make sure that's tightened and won't loosen up after some time 
you can see here the full throttle is not even touching the stop that way the throttle plate goes more than full throttle it's actually going back to closing once again oh yeah and on this video we talk about the vena contracta which is related to sizing the throttle body and we'll talk about that later but the description below will have this video if you want to check it further so wait sorry we're gonna adjust the stop for the full throttle and show you guys how it's gonna be a lot better there we we'll hold it like that so you can get the screw lined up to the stop where it's supposed to be actually full throttle all right now here we're gonna show you wait it's taking time sorry about that i'm holding it close to me because i don't want to drop any small bolts okay here see it doesn't stick and then here i adjusted it and now full throttle it's good wait no okay we have to lessen it it's, it's a little bit yeah it's, it's like 90% full throttle only, okay? I pushed that too much. Let's back it out a bit. And then now you can see it. There. See, now it's full throttle. But this is not the final stage because when you put the TPS in, you start with the closed voltage and then the full throttle to get it calibrated well. Here's the OEM. I backed out the throttle stop to show you guys even an OEM would stick if it's not adjusted well. Look at this. I backed it off. Well, see? It sticks. That's no good. But the thing is, the OEM is almost always adjusted well. And the double knot is secured really, really tight. Here, you can see the double knot there in the Allen. So, once you get correct like that, there... You have to tighten it like really snug. See? No more throttle stick. Right? So now it's good. Yep. All right. Now going back to the Blocks billet throttle body, or actually any billet throttle body. Here's the full throttle stop, you can see. And also you can see it's double knot, so it's locked tight in here on this angle you can see the full throttle stop is here and of course the idle stop screw or the idle throttle stop is down here and here is our step that makes adjustment of the tps or calibration a lot easier set the throttle stop on the closed section without sticking or when you get it to the point that it doesn't stick now get the tps and calibrate the shutdown or the closed calibration of 0.5 volts set it good and then when you open it to 4.5 volts full throttle that's where you set the full throttle stop screw because we're at the mercy of the range of the tps anything more you'll throw a check engine code and get it pre-calibrated or set up like that any billet throttle body will actually be functioning flawless and really good so now let's go here and I've heard instances where the butterfly is cockeyed or not aligned and you got to loosen the throttle plate bolts so that you can, know, you can align it by opening and closing. But you got to replace the bolts because the tips are swedged. This way it won't loosen up. So you have to grind it off on the, on the tip before you loosen it. All right. Yep. Here it looks good. But it, it's, it's something that we haven't encountered, but I've just heard about it. So that was the solution. Here is the throttle stop, and you can see here, it, a lot of times, we've never encountered something that's not aligned here or opens too much, but if it does, you can swedge something like a steel plate there and bolt it to align it. Here is the throttle stop for the idle, and here, you can see, it doesn't stick, right? It's really good. One of these throttles is going to Bavin together with the h22 manifold that we ported he actually acquired it so somebody's gonna make power let me show you a few pictures of the throttle stuff for the full throttle and the idle on this cast 70 millimeter throttle here you can see the throttle stop is right there so it's easy to adjust and also in this angle just like the oem honda throttle body you can easily adjust it and of course here look at this we act we actually like to use this throttle that we 
we source from a supplier because it's always been very consistent. Even the throttle shaft is straight. It doesn't bind, nothing like that. So even the TPS thread bolts are, you know, not unusually wrong or like badly machined. So it's really good. Okay, wait, let me show you something. Here, even the idle screw, it's machined pretty well. So the, it doesn't act on idle and all that. Even the IACV is pretty good. This is actually why we always source this throttle body, the OEM cast style, 70 millimeter. And it's actually $90 if you need it from us. Even locally, you can PM or DM us at the shop page for any orders of these throttles that we run. All right. And here, look at the blocks, billet throttle. It no longer sticks, right? Because we've adjusted the throttle stop for the full throttle and the closed throttle. So it's really good now. And the thing here is that, you know, locally, a lot of people are actually obsessed with running a big throttle body, like thinking it might make wonders of power, but it doesn't work that way. If you think about it, if the engine does not demand that air or the intake entry is not good enough, it's not gonna work, right? I mean, it's not gonna give the expected gains. So here, take a look at this. Remember I mentioned Vena Contracta, which is the least diameter, which has the maximum speed and flow. The intake comes from here, right? And then to the throttle, across the throttle to fill the plenum up. And the reason why I mentioned this because you need the plenum of the intake manifold filled up really well because of this. Imagine runner one firing or the induction stroke of runner one, right? So it sucks in air like this. Okay, so by this time, you got to have the plenum filled with air, like really, really good, right? So that when the induction stroke for one goes filling the cylinder, the chamber really good. And of course, after that, runner number three is next because that's the firing order. So it needs to get enough air in the plenum. And you can see here in this drawing, we animated the drawing to show you guys. Fill the plenum, then number four, then back to number one. So let's speed it up again. Look. Runner number one, then three, then fill the plenum, then fill the four, and then two. So as long as you fill the plenum really good or more than enough, this is what increases the volumetric efficiency of the engine, or at least one of them, because aside from this, you gotta have a good intake pipe. And of course, the exhaust has to be really good. So I hope you guys can visualize what I'm trying to show here. You can speed it up again here. You can see if the plenum is always filled really good, this is going to be really good or excellent for the engine. It's going to be running efficient. Each runner is going to be packed with good air or air with in the induction stroke. So that's going to be good. That will always equate to more power and of course efficiency. And more power also means that's more torque, you know, because power or horsepower is derived from torque over time. So that's going to be really, really good here. You can see. And of course, that's why this is also important. If you look, if you remember this, this intake pipe alone, the velocity stack was responsible for the power from going from 106 to 112 wheel horsepower. That's a lot, right? And this VTI still ran a 56 millimeter stock throttle body. Stop, it's small. And this is why we mentioned earlier this video, which will be in the description below. You can see in this thumbnail, the attempt is actually to fill the plenum really good, right? And that is also why it's worth checking this P30 intake manifold video that we ported because we talked about the power band, including the RPMs and how you change it with the efficiency of the intake. And also on this intake manifold, the ITR that we ported in the video, we discussed the RPM and power band further. And of course here to help you binge watch, that actually relates to the transmission side of things. And we have a video and we talked about the gear ratios, including the relationship on the RPMs over here. All the videos mentioned will have a link in the description below. And of course, on this end screen, a playlist that will let you click everything here.